Well, it's another Sunday. Welcome to the Shaker Heights, where experiences may vary. I'm your co-host, Gabe Tolliver. We got my man, Eric Green. And uh, today, we have Class of 86, Christine Cicero Corbusero. We're going to bring her in. Over, over. There we go. Hey, welcome to the show. Hi. How are you? Welcome. All right. How you doing for the, on this Sunday? Good. It's a little gloomy here in Cleveland, but it's Cleveland, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's gloom without Cleveland, yep. you know? Um, no, thank you for taking time out to join us. I'm just trying to get myself uh, situated with my camera here. There we go. All right. This is episode number, what, 13? Ooh, lucky number 13. Yes. One of my favorite numbers. Pretty good this week. Yes. Work in progress. Yes. We have an in-house band that Eric and I contracted out to do the music, and uh, they're still learning the notes. And, oh, and we're broadcasting live Which this week. Which are we? Are we? We're at the uh, Coventry newsstand on the shaker line we were getting complaints that we were you know not paying attention to the folks that grew up on the green line so we decided to move the show over to the coventry newsstand stop where we're live and direct in our minds <laughs> <laughs> so here we are um uh yeah we gotta get one thing out of the way you know we got this advertisement. We got to advertise the hometown, hometown kid. You know, Christine, you and I were talking about uh, businesses and and their ethical perspective on things. Yep. This is a business that is on point. Everything they make, they donate to help kids. They don't have greedy executives with golden parachutes and all that. And they make quality food. And they're saying their food's really good too, right? Yes, indeed. You must try their frozen pizza. Who knew that this kid from Brighton Road would have such an amazing legacy and career? Acting, racing, and now fine quality food. If you haven't tried Newman's Own, it's in your fine grocer's freezer. Heinen's, Dave's, Giant, Safeway. Or wherever you shop, Whole Foods, Newman's Own. Don't take my word for it. Try it. Okay. I think we got some op- new sponsorship opportunities. I hear Heinen. Shout out to Heinen. Yes, shout out to Heinen's. Do you have any Heinen stories, Christine? Well, I shop at Heinen still on a regular okay. basis. There's one down the street. The okay. biggest advance in at Heinen's for me was that my store and I think the Mayfield Village store, I don't know, I know not all of them are doing this. They are letting you bring your carts to the car. Um, big advancement. You don't have to yes. pull around and uh, yeah, you don't have to pull around <laughs> and have your car loaded. Right. Um, I'm a huge proponent of Heinen's. I tell people have people tell me all the time, oh, it's too expensive. And I say, actually, it's not. If you compare their prices, they're not. So I love yeah. Heinen's. So there you go. There's we get a free pitch for Heinen. There we go. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man. So tell us, Christine. Um, yeah, where where did your shaker journey start for you? So um I grew up as a kid actually in University Heights. Um, but we didn't go to high I went to first grade in Heights, and my parents were like, Yeah, no, the school is not good enough. So I we all got pulled out and put into a private school um it was actually kind of funny because i was having this conversation with gabe uh i'm a very confusing person my name is christine cicero porbicero but i am jewish and i went to a jewish day school um where we spoke hebrew every day and uh we i lived in university heights and everyone else on my block went to jesu Oh, wow. So nobody went to public school where I lived. And we lived like three blocks from Canterbury. Um, so I moved to Shaker in fifth grade. 
and okay. went to Fernway. Um, so came to Fernway, uh, loved it, lived next to my neighbor were the Brickmans. So John Brickman, Andy Brickman, Tom. Yeah, I remember the Brickmans. They yeah. were my neighbors down the street okay. were the, was it the Mueller's? Um, the Goodwins, the Goodwins lived yeah. two doors from me. Okay. Um, Sherry Williams and her, she was on Ingleside right through the yards. Okay. So, um, yeah, we, I came to Shaker in fifth and sixth and then I went to Woodbury. Um, okay. which was by far the better middle school. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> true, true, true. And then I went to Shaker. Okay. So, um, getting transferred or like from University Heights and coming into Shaker, was that just kind of like very abrupt? Like one morning you woke up and your parents were like, yo. Oh, um, no, it was actually really funny. So my parents, when they were looking for houses, I distinctly remember this. My mother claims she doesn't remember this, but okay, um, she was looking and we didn't want to leave our private school. And she said, well, the only way you're leaving is if we move to Shaker and there's no way we will move to Shaker. <laughs> and then we moved to Shaker. Um, Famous last words. I have three brothers. My older brother did go, oddly enough, from a Jewish day school to Gilmore Academy. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, Gilmore. So, I forgot about them. Yeah. Because... So he went right from a Jewish day school to a parochial school. Um, yeah. But the rest of us all went, came up through uh, Shaker. My youngest brother came up from kindergarten up. So like, like with like the, the Jewish day school, because mm -hmm. I remember having a couple of classmates at Ludlow that went uh, to Hebrew school. Right. Did you still continue going in and around going to Fernway or Woodbury? when I went to Fernway instead of obviously the Jewish day schools during the day instead of yeah. Baker, you know, instead of normal classes. So um, I did, we went to um, Hebrew school after school. So okay, we like once or twice a week, I think we had to go over um, on Fairmount Boulevard, okay, uh, yeah. Fairmount and Richmond. There was like a little building right there. Mm -hmm. um actually i think a temple owns it now but there was a preschool there as well that was the cleveland hebrew school for a long time okay where i went and did you did you like feel like any estrangement from your friends from uh you know day school and you know when you um moved? no i still kind of talked to some of them actually a couple of them um i'm still friends with on facebook now okay um but what the biggest impact i think uh thing that impacted me when i came to shaker was the fact that I wasn't like the only one. I mean, like I said, on my block, I grew up, everybody went to Jesus. They were all Catholic. Um, yeah. When I came to Shaker, it was just very welcoming. There was a ton of diversity and, and inclusion, um, which impacted me as an adult, because when I was looking for a house, I told my husband, I was like, I can't move here. There's not enough diversity. Like that was a huge big mm -hmm. deal to me. Um, right. And it was just you know, Shaker really embraces every culture and every religion. I feel like um, when I was a sophomore, I think it was Shaker added uh, closing school on the high holidays, which they hadn't done previously. And they still oh, do wow. to this day. Okay. All the Heights areas do it now. But um, I think the biggest thing for me was Shaker kind of made me think that that's what the world was like. Um, and mm -hmm. when I went to Ohio state and then went places, I was kind of shocked. Um, I didn't realize there weren't, you know, tons of temples. I didn't realize there weren't black people everywhere. I had somebody my freshman year tell me they had never met a black person or a Jewish person. And I thought they were kidding, but they weren't. Wow. And they were from Ohio. Um, well, you know, Ohio has, uh, what is it? 88 <laughs> counties. Yep. And, uh, yeah, some of those counties, uh, seem like another planet. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I followed the Shaker train to Ohio State. Yeah. <laughs> with the rest yeah I mean, we all, yes. Uh, so That's a whole documentary yeah, right there. <laughs> uh, I lived across the street from John Dent for a while. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, still saw everybody all the time. <laughs> it was like yeah, you didn't yeah. leave high school. You just kind of ran into the same people. Right, right. And then... um. 
what was your what was your interest uh, academically down at Ohio State? Did you kind of know what you wanted to go into? Um, or you were yeah, still... when I got there, I yeah. wanted to do some sort of communications or journalism kind of something. Okay. Um, and my freshman year, I had taken like an in-studio class for like news production and then found out that that was the only in-studio class for um, communications and had learned a valuable lesson from my brother who had graduated in communications that if you didn't have experience in school, you weren't gonna probably get a job when you got out. So mm -hmm. I switched my major to journalism because they required an internship and I had to do two semesters at the paper. So okay. I was a writer and I was a copy editor, so. At the, was it the Lantern, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, my memory. My memory sometimes <laughs> fails me. Like, like this was like, I remember like when we reconnected uh, over on Facebook, and we were talking, and you were like, uh, do you remember? <laughs> I forget how you set it up. It was like, we went to the Duran Duran concert together with uh, Ashley Imus and uh, Ty Bassett, yep. RIP. And I was like, oh, I don't remember. I, I like, I didn't re honestly remember for a second. And then Eric had pointed out, like, both of those concerts were snowstorms. Mm -hmm. So, like, in my mind, I had them shuffled. Yep. So, but yes, we went to Duran Duran. And I'm, I wound up pushing the car. There was like, it was like a Honda or something. It was a not a good car. I think right, I don't right. remember it was Ashley's whose car it was. But I yeah. just remember you got out to push because Ty didn't want to ruin his shoes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that says a lot, right? <laughs> oh, fun times. Um, so let me ask you this: since you're you were at Laurel, right? At Laurel? No. Uh, my, you mean the private school? Yeah. Oh, I was at a school called Agnon. Oh, Agnon. Yeah. Okay. So did you, um, were you, like, I, I hear John Dent, did you hang out with, with Shaker people? or? Did um, you... Not at elementary school. When I got to high school, I hung out. Um, and at high school, I would cool. say I hung out more with the class of 85 um, up until they graduated than I hung out with probably 86. I mean, I hung out with certain people. Um, Amy Vale ran with me all the time. Laura Calfatis. We were all dance club. Well, as you guys probably remember, we were all dance club uh, members. So dance club took up probably the majority of what we did that. And then they were cheerleaders. So football right. and dance were pretty much all we did. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned dance because I'm going to get Jim Capaletti on, you know. <laughs> Uh, cause he was part of the dance. Yes. Was Jimmy it? and I yeah. were good friends. Yeah. 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 Yeah, man. I mean, when I look back at that, yeah, Jimmy was, you know, it was like, um, what's that show? Uh, fame. Yeah. Arts, I was going to tell you, we thought we were fame. We really <laughs> right? did. We thought we were in fame a hundred percent. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, it was fun. I mean, it was a great yeah. experience. It kept us out of trouble. Um, yeah. And, you know, for people like Jimmy, it's made a career out of it. Um, yeah. And a, quite a few other people that were in dance club actually went somewhere with it. I mean, we had a really talented, looking back, such a talented, like, arts component. Right. The theater, the dance. I mean, just, man. In fact, wow. we didn't have an, a, like, a art school, like, you know. Yeah, creative school is kind of amazing because if you look at the people who've come out of Shaker and so what a lot of them have done, right, right, it's kind I of amazing. So, I'm so surprised at how many people were there. Well, after the fact, I found out went to art school or you know are working in the arts or music, and I was comparing I was comparing notes. I went to the Cleveland Institute of Art, and a friend of mine who we'll probably have on the show, he's got the man Jason works in the entertainment business, but he went to the Baltimore School of Arts and, and he went with Tupac and uh, oh, nice. his, uh, wife. And we're having the same conversation. You know, it's it's crazy how how the schools were similar and not being defined as a school. Yeah. And also you think about it. Um, I mean, you had you had teachers like, you know, James Hoffman, um, Parcelides, I, I, you know, I don't know anybody. Mr. Gordon, the who side. was in uh, theater. Yeah. Okay. But just the fact that um, they were just really good at what they they were doing, and where our school was 
I, you know, just kind of like most of the time, like meat, meat, meat and potatoes, you know, like you, you get, you know, you study the traditional stuff and then you hopefully go to a notable school. I mean, a lot of stuff was, you know, very, uh, I don't know. I feel like Ralph Lauren ish in some ways. Right. Well, and then you think about yeah. some of the families, right? I mean, yeah. I remember being at a seventh grade talent show at Woodbury and Sean LaVert was on stage singing. I mean, in the, o I think the OJs came and performed that year. I mean, it's just <laughs> like the, the access that a lot of the families already came out of, I think, right. I wonder if that also had some impact yeah. on just the expansion of the arts. So, so Gerald, we, Gerald was in our class. Right. Sean, Sean was Sean, in my class. Yeah. I, I don't even remember seeing him. Do you remember seeing him? Gabe? No, I, I, I remember Sean like after, after high school. Um, that's what, that's what was crazy about it. You know, like, cause I remember the group, I mean, it was Gerald and there was like, uh, Ted Jones and, couple other guys in our grade that were associated with the Libert music machine, but right. his brother, yeah, his brother was sort of like, I didn't really know about him until after school. I was like, Oh, he had a brother. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Did Mark Gordon go to the, the one who was not related? Yeah. Like, I mean, I see him in a lot of the early photos for Levert and stuff like that. Oh, you know? Was he a shaker resident or what? Where did he oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Wow, man. So Ohio State, man. Do you feel like, uh, did you feel like before, because, you know, we were there when it was before <laughs> the Ohio State University. <laughs> we were all there. Let's be honest. We were all there because at that time, you just had to graduate from an Ohio high school to get in. Yeah, I yeah. would never in a million years get into Ohio State right now. I have three kids and my oldest actually got in, but the other two got waitlisted. I mean, it wow. is incredibly, I don't think a lot of people realize how difficult it is to get into main campus now. Yeah, that, that, like, like they stepped their game up, you know, like we're the Ohio State University. <laughs> I was down there a couple of weeks ago for uh, I went I went down for a night for a craft work show and I went by the bookstore and I got the old like old English script T-shirt that says Ohio State. It would be, so, you know, from our era. Yep. You know, it was just like, wow. I mean, and that brought back a lot of memories, you know, <laughs> you know, even access to the uh, the football games as we had as students, you know, you got like a, a free... I'm shooting myself for not keeping going after I graduated. Cause yeah. Now yeah. those tickets are ridiculous. Yeah, totally. So is that man. long store still exists there? Long. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. One of the few <laughs> things that's still the same there. Um, yeah. Could you believe how much it's changed Gabe? Um, it, it was crazy. <laughs> like, I mean, high street is unrecognizable. Yeah. Um, and Long's head is totally modernized. Mm -hmm. It's everything. So, well, and I um, lived on high street. So when I go down there, I'm like, wow, that's where I ran all the time. Yeah. Like, nothing yeah. is the same. It's very different. Well, it the UDF is still there, which is nice. And Buckeye donut. <laughs> the staples. Yes. And the burning pouches or something. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, there was. I'm, that happened someplace down there. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, when we won, the, when they won the national championships, they they did that. I don't remember ever seeing a couch burning when I lived there. But no, I lived at uh, South Campus off of West Ninth. Okay. In, in South High, yeah. But yeah, man, Ohio State. So those were the days. Take us from <laughs> yeah. <laughs> take us from Ohio State. So you graduate. And what was, uh, I, oh, let me I, stop. Uh, before then, did you find that your Shaker education uh, like served you greatly at Ohio State? Did you feel like you were ahead of the curve or was yeah, it challenging well, for you? It's kind of funny that you not? say that because I obviously I have an older brother who I said went to Gilmore. So yeah. much higher education, uh, supposedly. Um, <laughs> he went to Miami and um, I remember he said that like, you know, what he learned in high school is his studying skills got him through. Um, my freshman year of Ohio State, I didn't do the greatest, but I also lived in the towers. Oh, the infamous tower. <laughs> so we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, I actually found that 
the education I got at Shaker was a hundred percent like on par with um, not only the private education I was getting, but definitely prepared me for Ohio State. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it wasn't like any like academic uh, culture shock, you know, like, oh, why did I think you went to Laurel? Why did, did, did we talk about that, Gabe? No, I think I mentioned somebody else who had went to Laurel, but the fact uh, Gilmore being brought up, like I totally forgot about that school within the Regina Benedictine, yep. um, that whole orbit, you know, yep. I mean, it's amazing how many private schools Shaker fed. Well, Gilmore is you know? still open and U.S. is open and they're right by each other. Um, yeah. And Haw is Hawkins still around? Yeah, Hawkins still exists. Yeah. Halfway Brown, Laurel. Yeah. Regina, um, no longer. Okay. What, what was the school behind the bricks on uh, Lee Road? Behind the brick, Beaumont. Beaumont. Oh. Oh, Beaumont. I That's another one. I don't know if Beaumont's still around or not. For some reason, I thought I. Had I know they were winning the track state champ track championships, and they had no 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 field, no track <laughs> to run on. But they would always win. Wow, I remember Beaumont. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like all these schools you know, that were clustered that was around Shaker. Yeah, all girls school. Yeah, yeah. And the president, the student, I'm going to still see. I think all the student presidents were, I heard there's rumor. They're, they're pregnant. I don't know. That's what I heard. Back <laughs> oh, by him? What? By said, oh, I, I'm lost in translation. Who? <laughs> The, the uh, it was an all girls school, it was a private school. Okay, yeah. A lot of the girls were became pregnant while they were students at Beaumont. So. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, so that was the talk of Student the town, body, if you will. I yeah. will. I will say, <laughs> I worked with some girls at Sands Deli. If you remember Sands, I worked there for years with a bunch of people. I worked at Sands. We probably worked together too. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I worked as a dishwasher and a and uh, a busboy. So, do you remember a waitress named Julie? She was wild. She went to Beaumont. Okay, was she tall? Smoked a lot of cigarettes. No. Okay. She was well built, and I just remember she wore for Halloween one year. She wore a nun's habit was her costume, and she picked it up to show us she was wearing red lace underwear because she oh. thought that was. A funny costume. So my point being, the Beaumont story that Eric just told. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> might, might hold some water. You know what repression does. You know when they tell you you can't have something, that's when you you really wow. want. Wow, right? So real quick about sand. So um, I, I'm trying to remember some of the other waitresses that worked there. I know like one of the Belkins worked there. Yep, I was a and, I was a cashier. Okay. And you worked with like Amy Hazel used to work there. She was in 86. She was in my grade. Okay. Um, and I'm trying to remember who else. I know Amy Vale worked there. Um, there were a couple other girls that worked there. This is bad. I shouldn't be telling this story. Um, but <laughs> spill the tea, spill the tea. We maybe used to be able <laughs> to leave with alcoholic beverages. Oh, without the employer knowing over. from yeah. the cooler. Yeah. Um, and there may have been a teacher at Shaker that we were friends with that really liked craft beer that we may have <laughs> used to put four packs in the back of his truck in the parking lot. Whoa. Oh, okay. Okay. <sighs> I'll just say That's the science. Right. I, I'll just say he was a science teacher, and that should be enough for the people who knew. Okay. If, if you so ever if took you know, environmental you know. science, how's that? Yeah. If you know, you know. Yeah. Um, I remember uh, a couple of those, the Shaker guys I worked with at Sands were also bus boys and worked in the back. Um, yeah, they used to uh, put nice fine cuts of roast beef and <laughs> turkey in a garbage bag, and they would. Uh, yeah. <laughs> act like the garbage bag was trash and then take it home out the back yeah yeah <laughs> there was a lot that walked out of that place. it was probably really bad oh yeah especially with the owner's son you know uh oh, who, who remember <laughs> yes the upstairs <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, it was a, definitely a fun place to work in high school. That was for sure. Yes. Is it still around? Or no. It still- um, it sold to another guy. And then he ended up closing it. And with Van Aken becoming what it is, that's a whole other thing. I don't know when yes. you were here last, Gabe. Uh, I mean, 20, I grew up 20. on Norwood. So I grew up yeah. right on off of Van Aken. So I lived at Van Aken. Yeah. So um, I know another episode you guys were talking about the colony. Yes. So my brother that I'm talking about, the older one, he was actually an usher there <laughs> during <laughs> all that time when we were doing all that oh man um he didn't like us so much he wasn't happy with us um but uh no the what's going on and in, in on van aiken the way they've developed it is kind of unbelievable if you haven't been yeah i haven't been there uh before they the last time i was there it was before they broke ground for that new high rise where ohio savings mm-hmm. was in the parking lot so when I come back in July, that's going to be like, I hadn't been back there since, uh, yeah, like maybe 2021. Yeah. yeah. So like up with, it wasn't that Ohio savings to Starbucks. Can you not hear me? I can't. Can you, you can't hear me. I can hear you. Yep. Okay. So there was a, right at the end of the rapid Van Aken line where it yeah. turned around. Was that where the Ohio savings was? And then it was a Starbucks. Uh-huh. So that's where they're building the. Well, they kind of built that like whole area. So the, the, like the end of the line there that would turn around is like almost, you don't see it anymore. I don't know what they've done with it. I'm sure it's over there, but I haven't seen it. So they built up this area with like a big uh, food court called Market District or not Market District, what's called Van Aken District, I think. That, but I'm just saying right where the rapid is, like right across from the district. I haven't seen, I didn't notice anything over there. But I'm usually over in the other area, like off of Farnsley. So yeah, um, okay. I'm just trying to trying to picture the high ride. I, I'll see it. Yeah, you'll see it. It's almost um, it's it's almost like diagonally across from 1899 or whatever that golf place that used to be the you know the colony or yeah theater. Vogue. The Vogue. The Vogue. Okay. That's what it was. I yeah. called it the Vogue. Colony. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, it it's like from just seeing it like on paper, it's like huge, and they got like New York prices for rent, which is crazy. Yeah, they do. Um, and those other spots that, to your point, Eric, where the uh, rapid would turn around, there's apartments there that overlook where the turnaround is. Okay, that's what I was trying to. Yeah, but I don't know those apartments. They got like. They got like see-through bathroom windows on the side, and it's almost like you gotta like get an extra long bathroom curtain. And I guess it, maybe they wanted the light to come in. I don't know if that's southern exposure or whatever, but uh, that's what I noticed from the street. Hmm. But anyway, wow, <laughs> damn. So, uh, Ohio State. You finished up there. Yeah, and I stayed there for two years. I lived there. Um, okay. And then it's like everybody decided to stay. Um, and we were all competing for jobs. So yeah. I w- uh, I had heard some people were leaving. And I was like, you know what? Let's move. And uh, I was dating my now husband. And so we decided to come back up north. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, the funniest thing is at that same time, and I don't know if you how long you were down there for, Gabe, but it was like all of us moved back. That's why this whole thing is so bizarre. We all went to Shaker, then we all moved to Columbus, then we all came back to Cleveland, like almost at the same time. Wow. Yeah. Um, so I came back here. I did move uh, east of here to Ashtabula. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. For Ashtabula. a whole month, I think I made it. <laughs> Um, and cause my husband's family was from there. So we had a place to live and jobs. Um, and yeah. then I ended up, I, after that, I came back, lived in Cleveland Heights for a while on Coventry. Mm-hmm. Um, and then bought my house, uh, that I'm still in, in Willoughby. Well, Willoughby. Okay. Hills, yeah. Yeah. So I think Tony Peck lives out in, is it Willow, Willoughby? Yeah. He lives out Willoughby, Willoughby or Willowick maybe. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, Dane Kennedy is from. Oh, really? Yeah. 
Wow. When I think of Ashton Beulah, I think about those uh, TV um, weather things because they always talk about like a, a tornado touching down yeah, in Ashton Beulah County. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what are you repping? Yeah, we still, we still have a house up there. The house my husband grew up in, we have up there. It's right on the lake. So, I mean, oh, it's okay. a great place to vacation. It's just yeah. somewhere I want to live permanently because yeah. yeah. there's no culture. Literally, my husband calls it a cultural dead zone. I have to add one one tidbit. Uh, the Gilmore Academy T-shirts are very popular amongst the Pink Floyd contingent. Really? Yeah, all around, all around, everywhere. Because he was wearing a uh, David Gilmore was pictured wearing a Gilmore Academy T-shirt. So, oh wow! Wow! I didn't know that. Yeah, I know these these useless facts. No, that, no, that's super interesting. E Eric's going to be opening up a record store. He's bringing he's bringing back records and cassettes. Vinyl is it? I'll tell you yes. what. I just moved my daughter yesterday, and she has a record player, and she has a stack of vinyl. Wow! And she's right twenty two. She's she would rather have vinyl than anything else. Well, I miss that cassettes. You know, I miss that. So yeah, bring, bring it back. I mean, a the whole idea. A track. A track. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, you think about eight tracks were uh, a superior format at one time, you know, just in terms of uh, the audio quality. I still sing songs like I had some uh, eight tracks, and you know, when it pauses and it clicks over and then it fades yeah. again, I sing a lot of my favorite beach BG songs like that because I started out with the eight track, and I had my whole collection started off in eight track. I remember I my parents had an eight track. track. Too. Yeah. <laughs> We had one of those, um, like them Sears uh, entertainment cabinets, you know, it had the record player and the eight track player thing in there. And uh, yeah, I remember those clunky cassettes. My mom had a lot of gospel on that, but uh, yeah, the eight tracks. Wow. I want to get one of those, um, what do you call it? Uh, Walkman inspired reissues because I still have a lot of cassettes. So. Yeah, mixtapes. Got to do something with those. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They'd be worth something. Yeah. So, okay. You back up in Northeast Ohio. Yeah. And everything. I, I came back up here um, and I own my own marketing company for about 25 years. Wow. Um, right. In between Tell doing other it. things. Yeah. Um, well, uh, we started in 93. I started with my younger brother, who's class of 87. Okay. Um, Greg. Uh, we started a company and we had this great idea to what would it be like if your sales force could be out in the field and they could go on their computer, go on a computer and see your stock and sell to the live actual inventory and place the order. Um, mm. And so we'd go and I'd pitch it and they'd love it. And then they would look at me and go, so you want me to get my whole sales force laptops? I didn't think that part through, but yeah. they kept saying it was 93 and they kept saying, do you do web? Do you do websites? And so right. being the consummate salesperson I am, I said, of course we do. Um, and we figured it out and we uh, did a whole bunch of websites. Um, okay. I just actually stopped this month um, doing uh, Pickwick and Frolic, which is on 4th Street. Hilarities. Um, I've done their website for the past 20 three years. So wow. we just uh, handed it off. Um, okay. So yeah, um, I did that for quite a while. Um, and then I bartended um, when I had yeah. kids because it was great because I didn't have to have a babysitter. I could go go to work yeah. at night. So I did that. Um, and then I've had all different kinds of jobs. I've worked in the boating industry. Um, I work. Oh, so you, you go to over the IX for the boating? Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So um, there's most people don't know this. There's a sailboat com manufacturer in Ohio. They're in Fairport Harbor, which is not that far. Um, and they make really amazing boats. Um, so I worked for them off and on for about 15, 10 years, 15 years wow. um, as their marketing director. And then um, I left, did hospitality for a while. And then recently jumped to my true passion, thinking I found my 
my job I was going to have until I retired uh, in the cannabis industry. Um, and oh, right on. Right that on. was somewhat short lived. And then I'm back in marketing, but I'm still working with people in the cannabis industry. Um, so let's talk about Ohio and cannabis briefly. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, it's a legit business, of course. Uh, many medicinal uh, things for it. Yeah, yeah. So what's been your take on um, Ohio's coming into getting with the program? I guess about, you so, know, cannabis. So I've been an activist for, I don't even know how many years at this point. So um, some people might remember, I don't know if you remember it, Gabe, there was a the very first initiative that got proposed in Ohio was called Responsible Ohio. And mm -hmm. it was a group of eight kind of consortiums, eight business groups that were going to come in and they were proposing recreational cannabis right out of the bat. I see. But the way the law was written was these eight companies were the only ones who were going to maintain kind of ownership and ability in the industry. Oh, they wanted to be a cartel. They were going to be an oligarchy. Um, and yeah. some of what um, some of the people involved, it was kind of funny. I don't know if you know, Nick Lachey, he was like the face of the campaign because his family was invested with one of the groups. Oh, Okay. Interesting. The yeah, name a little familiar. music reference. It was 98 degrees. It was the boy yeah. band they were in. Yeah. Uh, I think they're from St Steubenville. Is it Youngstown? Okay. So they partnered up with some people and Nick okay. for a while was the face of it. Um, I, at the time, had joined a group called Ohioans to End Prohibition, which was another cannabis group that was trying to get legalization. But they were a very grassroots, activist-driven group that wanted, like, open market, right? I see. Let's, let's give everybody access. Um, we actually shifted our focus to stop Responsible Ohio, because once it got on the ballot, we did not want it. Nobody, we didn't want it to pass. Right. Um, and the reason is we didn't we wanted a freer market. We didn't think it was fair. Fast forward, um, and the that failed. Um, and a new initiative came out because they realized that after doing some polls that medical would pass, but recreational was not going to. Mm. So uh, a, a super PAC group called uh, Marijuana Policy Project um, came into Ohio and formed an initiative called Ohioans for Medical Marijuana. And I joined that initiative. And we were collecting signatures. We were super active. And actually, our group was the reason that we have the law right now in Ohio, because oh, we had gotten okay. so many signatures that the state was panicking. Mm -hmm. And our initiative was going to change the Constitution. And if you do it that way, they can't have any say. They don't have any power. So House Bill 523 got quickly pushed. Um, there were, it, it, since then I have found out there were some serious, there was some serious corruption between some MPP and Ohio politicians with some promises made for us yeah. to be made to go away. Um, mm -hmm. So it did pass and we do have the current program. Um, I am a patient. Uh, I think it's a great program for patients. I think there's definitely some improvements that can be made. I think they have quickly, you know, um, if they see a problem, they fix it. Um, biggest issue I have with our problem or with our current medical program is everywhere else sells eighths and quarters. <laughs> and in Ohio, we have a tenth. Ten. It's a made up measurement. <laughs> And every other cannabis culture in the country makes fun of us. We call it the Ohio tenth. So, okay, what is a tenth percentage wise? Like, it's what does that look point, like? It's, so, a tenth is two point eight three grams. That's. <laughs> I, I I mean I I have no reference point. It, it makes for no. It buds, makes it made well. Uh, it made but, no sense. I mean, you know, yeah. back in the day, you you'd go and you'd get a quarter. Like. Like, you know, you'd get yeah. a quarter, which is like this much, or yeah. you'd get an eighth, which is half of that. Right. Ohio just made up this entire like 
protocol. Um, Just to be different. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and they also, like, you have a certain number of days. And the way they made it um, was so that, like, if I go and I get something that's – actually, I'm sorry. The 10th, I think, is less than the 223. Um, if I go and I want to get a one-day dose – if I get a one gram cart, it's two days because it's over the 0.84 that I'm allowed per day. So it's like, it makes no sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the program's good. There's a lot of really good people in the program. There's a lot of really good um, people who work in the dispensaries um, that mm -hmm. are really there. I will say the bud tenders are definitely there to help people. Um, their goal isn't to just sell. They don't work on commission. Um, they literally just are there to try to give you the best advice they can give you. Um, and now we have the rec program, um, which is coming sooner than most people realize. Um, June 7th, which is the end of this week, they are starting to take applications for the existing um, companies that are established in Ohio already to be able to duly sell out of the same dispensary, medical mm. and rec. Okay. Wow. So they're so, saying by the end of the month, we could have a couple dispensaries selling recreational cannabis. And do you think, um, do you think it's going to scale up uh, like Michigan or? It already is. Colorado? I mean, so okay. the way the law was written, I believe that the people who currently have stakes, um, and like if you're a, a cultivator and you, and you're multi-tiered, mm -hmm. um, you can add five dispensaries, I believe was the number I heard, like right out of the gate. Oh, wow. Um, so we're already seeing a lot of that going on. We're seeing, you know, I just saw a story yesterday where truly huge player in the industry um, is getting some dispensaries from Harvest of Ohio, um, which owed them a bunch of money. <laughs> um, and part of the oh. settlement was they were like, just give us some of your licenses. Um, wow. So, it, it, you know, you're going to see some really interesting stuff going on in the state. It's definitely going to be wheeling and dealing kind of stuff. Mm. Okay. Um, but I mean, I hope the program, I, I think you've got at least two years till our prices come anywhere close to Michigan's. Um, that's just my opinion. Uh, Michigan, I know some people who went up for 420 and what I was hearing they were paying, I, I, I it was cheaper than like high school prices. <laughs> so, um, it's, it's interesting. Uh, that's for sure. But I mean, I hope they do the right thing. How do you how do you view New York? I live in Rochester, and there's an old high hop that's turned into a dispensary. And I think that they've taken parts of the old Kodak building and turned that into a growing place. New York has been really interesting. Um, they they like legalized, but then they're they were so you know red taped that. It's been, from what I've heard from people I know in New York, it's been very, very difficult to get your licensing and get opened and get everything going. I want to say the first one that opened, Gabe, you might have read about this. I don't know. Um, it was in New York and it was like a nonprofit cannabis. Yeah, place. I remember vaguely. Yeah. And it, I can't remember if it was in the city or if it was in Brooklyn. It was, yeah, it was in the city. Okay. It was downtown. Um, and I mean, they opened, they had a line around the corner, yes. down the street. Um, non how do you, how do you verify or why nonprofit? That was the interesting thing. I haven't yeah. dug into it, but that was how it was listed. And I was like, how are you nonprofit? Unless they're taking their money and they're somehow investing in something. And then I'm okay with that. Um, I think there needs to be more investment back into the communities that were most affected by the war on drugs, the failed war on drugs. Right. Um, you know, I have a real problem with the fact that when I look at the Ohio, the bulk of the Ohio owners, you've got rich white men who come out of the legal industry, the financial industry. They might have smoked. They might have partaken in cannabis, but they don't really know about the plant. Mm -hmm. um, but they're making millions and millions of dollars while 
people who did the same thing that have brown skin are sitting in prison cells. I have a real issue with that. You know what I like to compare it against? It seems like when it became a business, it was came like a a craft beer business. You're you know, right. You yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a good analogy. That's a very good analogy. It is like it's a craft beer business. And that's the whole thing. I went into the industry with, you know, coming from the activism side with these rose colored glasses and I'm going to change the world and I'm going to help people. I mean, I had very personal reasons why I became an activist. Um, I had a friend whose daughter has seizures hundreds of times a day and nothing was helping her. And I believe the plant will help her, but she wouldn't give it to her unless it was legal. So to me, that became a huge, huge reason to make it legal, um, at least medically. Uh, yeah. And then at the same time, when I was in the hospitality industry, a very good friend of mine who was one of my servers passed away. And the reason he passed away was because he was doing something illegal, but because he had had two strikes, he was worried about his third one and he swallowed something that killed him. Mm. And no one should ever have to have that happen to them. Um, you 100%. know, it, it, there, this whole three strikes and you're out concept was just so, so absolutely ridiculous. And I mean, let's be honest, it was a concerted effort to try to put more people in prison and feed the prison industrial complex. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Ed Meese and so, so Reagan. Let me ask you this. So coming November, mm -hmm. if this uh, things change politically, right? see this industry being changed in any way or being troubled in any way? If we're talking about the orange person, um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. <laughs> you know, yeah. I couldn't help myself. No, um, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. We, Dave and I can... bond over this. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I don't because this is where this is where I've come where I've kind of come to realize over the past two, three years, especially being more in touch with the actual business side of the industry. Um, there are a lot of people like him in the industry. I'll say that. Um, and there's a lot of people who have the same type of political leaning and affiliation he has. So um because they've realized that there can be make, you can make money with it now, there's a totally different stance on it. Uh, is there a chance of it being more monopolized? Um, of yes, I, I. In fact, you know, a lot of people were excited. The, um, I'm sure you guys might have seen the news that they are talking about. Um, they're de They're going to reschedule cannabis from right, one to right, three. The I'm all for that. Yeah. Having a having a plant classified as you know, as bad as heroin um, is ridiculous. But yeah. what they're reclassifying it to is saying it, it's a plus in that we can now have research so we can show the medicinal value and there can be huge advancements um, because I truly believe in the power of the plant. It really does have some seriously amazing medical benefits. Um, but with it going to schedule three, you kind of open up big pharma. Um, mm. And I'm a little bit afraid about what reclassifying it could potentially mean for the industry as it currently exists. Um, the cannabis companies are thrilled because if they reclassify it to level three, they will be able to take tax deductions that they have not been able to take up till now in the oh, industry. Man. And then how does it affect banking? Will that, would it allow them um, to open up banking? It should accounts? open up banking as well. Well, no, I don't know because it won't federally be legal. So I'd have to look oh, into I that. Um, it may allow banking. I don't know. Um, but yeah, banking is another issue. You know, it's, you can't get, because if a bank is federally funded, so in most states, it's the credit union. Yeah. I, I joked around, I joked around, um, over the years, well, the recent years, like whoever winds up on the ballot and winning, if they were to completely cancel student loans and, you know, legalize. Decriminalize cannabis. Then they will, will, they will be the, they will win. <laughs> yeah, I 100% agree. They will win. 
I mean, it's it's pretty simple, you know, pretty simple on that. Um, it's something I just like started. I don't want to say dabbling because I'm not using them, but like researching. Um, I know a couple people. Somebody I knew actually from Shaker. I don't think she went to Shaker. She might have gone to Laurel. Um, she's actually a cannabis uh, healthcare professional in Oregon. Um, or not cannabis, sorry, a mushroom. Um, and she does uh, microdosing for mental health. Mm -hmm. Did you guys freeze? Um, I'm moving. You, I think you froze. Uh, Your audio is still here. Okay, she's going to reset. I was going to stop see. my camera and try to, it won't yeah. even let me do that. That's weird. Um, All right. We've never had these things. We know that the powers of the bee are trying to stamp out. The <laughs> Me talking about too. cannabis. <laughs> uh, let me try this. Let me let me bring you back into the studio okay. and see what happens. Stay on. Let's see. Hey, now we're bringing her back to the stage. Okay. See. There we go. Okay. So yeah, I mean, okay. I think my, I there think uh, mushrooms are the new frontier. I think that um, yeah. there's going to be a lot going. Um, actually, there's a, sh a show that I, um, I highly recommend to people if they want to learn more about just alternative medicine. No, um, I'm talking the show that um, it, it's a trade show and events in uh, Ohio and Cleveland. Uh, it's in October. Oh, um, okay. And it's called the Ohio Cannabis Health Business Summit, uh, OCHBS. Um, it is mm. a really amazing show. It's got things for people who want to get into the industry. It's got things for people who want to learn more about being a patient. It has, last year they had um, a mushroom talk. Um, there's a really good company out of the Cleveland area called Epiphany Mushrooms. Um, they are not psychedelic yet because they're not legal here, but they do a lot of epidemic. Is it called epidemic mushrooms? Um, I'm probably saying that wrong. Health mm. mushrooms, lion's mane, um, uh, things like that. Um, but I think that mushrooms are definitely going to be the next thing, big thing you're going to see. Um, I'm already seeing it. I just saw, I just saw a commercial about comparing them on the internet. It was Instagram about them being the the new mm -hmm. Ozempic without yeah I've effect. heard huge things I mean I've been seeing on my social media feeds I've been seeing this new product called breeze it's like a non-alcoholic drink that has and it's not psychedelic mushrooms it's just like reishi and and mm. lion's mane and stuff like that in it and it supposedly is like a mood like it like chills you out how, how different is, I was having mm -hmm. knee problems. I just had surgery uh, last year and I was trying to find some relief before I had surgery. So I was mm -hmm. using CBD and how different is CBD from actual marijuana? Because it really threw me for a loop. I, I would come <laughs> up with thoughts and then they would disappear and vanish <laughs> like and I, that's interesting like cbd usually doesn't do that um cbd is just one of the 130 plus cannabinoids that the plant has um the biggest well-known ones are obviously thc and cbd um they're different in that cbd is not psychoactive um and cannabis is well thc is um but there's so many cannabinoids, then they're learning about more and more of them. And that is one of the good things about the program is you can try a combination um, of different cannabinoids. So like for me, there's a cannabinoid called CBG. Um, it's good for pain, inflammation, like CBD, um, but it also helps me sleep. Uh, so I happen to be a huge proponent of that, but then there's CBN and there's CB, there's there's tons and every year there's a buzz one, right? CBD happened to be the one that probably got picked up the most. Um, menopause first. Yeah. I mean, it, it, uh, I think 
that there's a lot of holistic solutions for things like that. Um, I personally have never taken drugs for that because I think I tried them once and they didn't work. So everything I've ever done has been holistic. I mean, I don't know that um, THC is going to necessarily help somebody with menopause, but I mean, CBD, um, yeah, some of the cannabinoids could potentially help. There's a, you know, there's, they call, there's a new cannabinoid called THCV. Um, they call it diet weed. Oh. Um, it's like weed without the munchies. Um, so oh. there's a lot of people who take that for a lot of female things I've heard people take. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, I mean, there's, there's a ton of benefits, um, that like, I use topicals on my skin a lot. My parents do. I mean, I've gotten my, you know, don't get mad at me if you're watching, mom, but I've gotten my mother to eat gummies before. Uh, <laughs> I've yeah, um, Try one, mom. Try it one. It worked. <laughs> um, I yeah, have yeah. friends. That, that's probably the most fun thing about being interested in the, being kind of involved in the industry. I'm very vocal about it on social media. So I've probably had over the years at least 30 people contact me saying, hey, I need your help. <laughs> saying, my dad yeah, has Alzheimer's. Yeah. What can I do? my mom has this, what can help? Um, and I think that that's, I mean, you know, as my one friend says, it comes from the earth. <laughs> so we should be afraid of it. There you go. There you go. There you go. And I mean, I, when I think about the, what do you call, I want to say the ironic or the mixed messaging. I mean, especially with uh, relates to alcohol and and it's just like, oh, but alcohol doesn't do anything bad to you. And yet you want to overly criminalize, uh, you know, the cannabis stuff when alcohol. Is yeah. Almost, and it has, it's worse for your body. Yeah. It has, I mean, yeah. you know. And cigarette smoking. Yes. You know? I, I bet you've learned tons more about politics with your involvement <laughs> in this. Yeah, when I was yeah, in Ohio I State, imagine. I actually yeah. wanted to be uh, like an activist. I wanted to be a lobbyist until I worked for the state house for a lobbyist and learned that all lobbying is is making deals. Like, okay, you have to give up this to get this, and you're not going to agree with this. Mm -hmm. But if you want this, you're going to do this. And I was like, this is just right, a bunch right. of deal making. Like, this isn't. I I had wrote, oh, oh I'm going to change the world. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. And in uh, yeah. cannabis, the the pol politicking um, is a whole new level, I would say. <laughs> wow. So I'm going to come full circle. So this is what we usually talk about in the show. I use our show's metaphor of us starting at the same base camp, going through this experiment mm -hmm. called Shaker Heights, the integration yeah. thing and returning to the base camp and sharing stories. And I, uh, what, what's your takeaway from what your outlook was as a student or going through Shaker, the experience, and then arriving here? And what do you see coming? What do you see? I don't know. Give me your perspective of then compared to now and how you you, you life in America or the world. Or <laughs> big, big questions. Glad I didn't medicate before the session. Are you from Shaker? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're from Shaker. You can handle big questions. You're from Shaker. Um, I mean, I yeah. think, you know, I I still live in the Cleveland area. Um, I see a lot has changed. Um, I think a lot's changed for the better, but I think we still have a lot of progress to make. Um, when I, you know, see some of what's going on in our country, um, I think that the Gen Z can really, they've shown they can do a lot. And I used to say this to the cannabis people all the time. The key to our politics and our future are getting them active. We need them to show up at the polls. We need them to vote. And we need them to educate themselves. Because one thing I've learned recently is they they're educated through social media. So they yeah. believe what they hear. Um, so I think mm -hmm. 
it's it's our job to make sure we teach our kids, some of us, our grandkids, you know, we just need to make sure that we are taking the spirit we learned from Shaker of inclusion and uh, diversity and having respect for other people's experiences and lives and pull that in to our kids to make sure they can make a change. And then hopefully we won't ever have to have a conversation about that person who we talked about earlier in November. So are you, are you mm-hmm. confident? that that can happen and it is happening or when i look at my kids i think it is happening my fear is i don't know what the base is right um you know i i really hope i'm hopeful that the base is more like my kids um than not but uh you know something's got to change i i am I don't even want to think about November because I don't know what's going to happen. And I don't know that either one is going to be without flaws. Right. Right. Well, one, one actually doesn't want to. Exactly. Right. One doesn't want to create a dictatorship. And And the other one is old, but he's surrounded by other people, other capable. I mean, it's not lead. It's not. It's as much leadership as it is the people that you are surrounding that are in your. your but I think in the future, part. real near future, next time we need some young blood. I'm not saying super young, but we need. You know, maybe our age would be great. <laughs> yeah, we need a multi-party <laughs> system. Um, yeah, I just think people see the corruption and um, that dissuades people from actually thinking that they could really I, I have so many conversations with adults people my age it's like well what are you going to do i mean what can we do I, our generation uh we were blessed with not being able not having to do as much because our parents did the, the heavy heavy work the heavy towing the heavy pulling and we were able right. to enjoy the, the fruits of their labor so i think that's I mean, I had hoped that the other day when the verdict came down that it was going to have a good impact, and all it did was help raise money, uh, yeah, which terrifies yeah. me for this country, that there's that many people that are like, yay. I've been reading the polls. I don't understand how there are undecided, you know? I just don't get it. <laughs> it's black. I mean, it's literally, pardon the fun, but it's literally black and white. I mean, there's... There's no, no gray area here. Right. But I know a lot of people who don't like either candidate and they're looking at voting for someone else. And I'm like, then you're giving another vote away, right? Then don't vote and don't show up. You know, a protest right. vote. What is that about? Yeah. That's, that's, that's I, I, you know, I feel like even on a more pragmatic level, I feel for the, um, you know, election oh. workers. Um, who will be faced with, uh, you know, potential threats um, and intimidation at these polls and stuff like that. And obviously it's going to vary, you know, state by state and stuff like that, but still, there's still a threat. I mean, I feel bad for um, like, you know, the jurors, you know, they did their job, they did it right. And if they weren't cognizant of like, okay, how do I, protect myself online um and now coming around to it it's you know it's going to be a little challenging because they are they have been noted yeah noted and um like i said on a post a couple days ago um after the verdict it's those who shout the loudest that a lot of times are not about it and it's the ones that are not shouting that are about it and whether they're a group or lone wolf, there still remains a threat. And, um, you know, I just read something uh, literally yesterday. Some ex-army vet uh, was told by God that the purge was happening and he was showing people how to make homemade bombs and fatal flunos and uh, what they call death boxes. You know, these are all techniques for maximum kill within a particular area. 
So, um, it, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's just going to, what can you say? I mean, it's going to get real spicy. It's all, it reminds me of War of the World, the internet. You know, we're mm-hmm. all listening to the same radio broadcast. Yeah, what's yeah. Real and what's not real. And then I think about the movie uh, Children of Men that came out a while back. I mean, it's not the same, but just this. I, I definitely feel like we're heading toward a very much of a dystopian type of environment out here. And um, this type of disinformation and unrest is going to continue in some way, shape or form and get more intense, especially with AI and deep fakes, you know? Everything is politicized. You know, just recently, Major League Baseball has incorporated the Negro League Baseball stats. So there's been some movement and position and I belong to these baseball, you know, websites. And man, you just read the comments and and it's, it always goes, it always turns out be a, a matter of race even if, even if it's maybe not meant to be taken that way but right. it becomes that we're in like a cold civil war now right here in this country yeah well i remember I telling my is. husband when um when he got elected when 45 got elected when he that day when i woke up yeah. and was like oh, everyone said it wasn't gonna happen um yeah I started noticing more and more stories um, about swastikas, about spray painting, you know, vandalizing Mm -hmm. black people's homes. Uh, And I thought at first, is it just the news covering more? And then I started noticing, no, it's actually happening more and more. And I told him, I said, the problem was he got up there and was like, yeah, it's okay. I'm going to talk about how I'm <laughs> racist and, and misogynistic and yeah. all these other things. It's okay for you to do the same thing. And it's like, it gave this sleeper cell <laughs> permission to come to the surface. And yeah, there are times where I look at our country and I'm like, God, maybe I should move. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember I was, uh, it was my last year at uh, journalism school or at Berkeley. And I remember we had a thing in the auditorium after 45 was elected. And certainly a a lot of younger students were very upset and crying and everything else. Then I remember they had an open mic for students to come up. So mind you, I'm probably one of five black students in in that program at that time. And I get up to the mic and I'm like, uh, and I said, and uh, I remember the dean was like, "Yeah, so hey, Gabe, what's your thoughts?" I'm like, "It's White Boy Day," and everybody got real quiet. And I said, "It's the alt right, the racists are now empowered." And the White Boy Day is a reference to the movie uh, True Romance. The character Dexter Spivey, played mm-hmm. by Gary Oldman, and um, he's beating up Christian Slater. Because in the movie, uh, Gary Oldman plays like a white Rasta. So he's beating up uh, Christian Slater. And he's like, what? You think this is White Boy Day? <laughs> you know, so it was just like, it was just like the classic line. But, you know, but, you know, it's true. It was true. And this is 2017. And, you know, obviously it was Berkeley. And, oh, we're going to be quiet. Like, oh, whatever. And I was just like, yeah. You know, it's White Boy Day. It makes me wonder, like this two-party system, that if they're in cahoots with each other. Of course they are. They are. I was reading, um, you know, you look at MSNBC, they'll bring on whatever that woman who was very controversial from uh, Fox, Megan, Megan, whatever. Uh, Megan Kelly. Megan Kelly. I was reading, started watching Big Brother. And that kind of pissed me off because the dynamics of America is a microcosm of what you see on that show where everyone screws each other. Physically and mentally. Psychotic uh, capitalism. So I was the the host, uh, Julie Chan. Um, Her husband Mm -hmm. is Les Moonves. 
read a quote about him talking about, well, I'm sorry, I'm excited about Trump. You know, I don't agree with him, but it's going to bring the networks a lot of money and a lot of opportunity. So mm-hmm. they seize that opportunity. Oh, yeah. 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 He's good for business. Yeah. They're, in that way. They're, That's all they care about. They're as complicit as oh, everyone else. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, with all this stuff going on in the campuses and all that stuff, how do you feel? I mean, I mean, we're 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 in this fight together. We're experiencing different things, but different points of view. But I want to hear what, what how you're um, feeling, especially being a Jewish. My daughter's graduated, person. so thankful. Um, thank yeah, you, and she's the last, so I don't have to worry. Um, but yeah. it's very concerning to me, and the biggest problem I have is it goes back to me talking about. Gen Z, right? And not understanding what they're talking about. I saw a really uh, mm-hmm. good video the other day of a guy who went to approach, went to one of the protest camps on campus and was like, hey, I just want to ask you questions. So you're screaming to the river, to the sea. What river? What sea? And they didn't know. Right. right. They said, what, right. What, what is Hamas's number one objective? They were like freeing Palestine. And they're like, no, it's to obliterate Jewish people. <laughs> they're like, all they they don't know. And so that's the problem I have is social media has such a huge impact on these young kids and they're believing everything. Now, do I disagree with the protests? No. I just think educate yourself. Um, I do I am Jewish, but I am not as I am not pro Netanyahu and the, what they're doing. Um, I think most exactly. of us who are Jewish in America feel that way. I don't think we agree with what's going on. There are some who do. I don't happen to be one of them. What I do, however, have a huge problem with in this country is that these kids have taken over campuses and said, no, you can't come in because of your religion. Um, you can't get an education we're going to spit on you. We're going to throw things at you. I don't care what someone's religion is, what their skin color is. You don't have a right to do that to another human being. And the fact that they can't see that what they're doing, the protesters in general, not just college students, um, Mm -hmm. is perpetuating more hate against a group that's already pretty hated. Um, you know, I see these things and people, you know, I have seen a lot of people on social media say, if the same exact thing happened to a black student, you would hear an, you know, an uproar, a cry. Um, Mm -hmm. why is it that this is, this, the colleges would never tolerate it. Why is it that because they're Jewish, it's being tolerated? Um, to me, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter. It's like if some if a student is being prevented from getting into class, getting an education, going places because of the color of their skin, because of their religion, because of their sexual orientation, it's never acceptable. And so yeah, I yeah, just have a real problem with the way they're handling it, I guess, is they're, they're tar- I, it, as, as a Jewish person, I feel like we're being targeted. Um, to a large degree by a lot of people in this country. All of us <laughs> minorities. You know, and also think, you know, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Well, just think about it. I mean, there's there's a trend. There's Asian hate, there's anti-Semitism or however you say it. And then, you know, we've always hated. So, you know, and then the immigrants, you know, they're they're part of the playbook where they're always pointed right. at and being the right. cause for the problem. The Jews have historically been pointed at as being the cause for the problem. So it's just history right. replaying itself. It's, 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 it's well, fashion, and you know, right? the history is a pendulum, right? It swings one way. It swings back the other. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're swinging very far towards the right, which I'm not real thrilled about. Um, you know, women don't have rights anymore. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's, You know, it's an interesting time. I'm hoping that we're at the tip of that side of the pendulum and that it's going to swing right back in the next couple of years. Um, Yeah, but it just doesn't just happen. 
we have to make it happen, right? Yeah, I mean, and it's also like, I was talking to Eric about this briefly, it's about the opacity of the targets and who is framing True. the conversation. And um, especially with, you know, you go back to the low information that, yeah, a lot of these students are, don't have the full, they don't have the full, they don't have the full cup. And it's easy to, you know, slogan, get with the slow well and that's chat. and i think that's the problem and, right the people who are yeah. running these groups that are coming in it's not like these students are just like cropping up and creating this there's a very organized right. group coming in yeah. and leading you know this is what we're going to scream this is what we're going to do this is what we're fighting for the my whole thing is question it like, yeah 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 well that's the thing i mean we live in this oversaturated digital age, information overload pushed to all of us. And we lack, well, a lot of us lack reference and context for media literacy, especially the youth, because they don't teach right. that. I mean, it's, it's trippy to think about uh, kids who are, who've grown up with the iPad or the internet totally. And if they hadn't had any type of, um, direction or shaping about what they're consuming. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it's just wide open. I mean, I mean, hey, I, we're think about it. Yeah. Critical thinking. Yeah. I didn't arrive at this juncture without um, getting uncomfortable with right. the way things are. And that makes you look and understand. Them. And now you become, I become cynical and that's what happens. <laughs> and they, why do they want that and why am i doing this they, they must want something from me so that was the point i was trying to make but <laughs> it's, just, it's just insane this where we're going and where it, it all comes to grief so it until people change that dynamic about themselves and that approach that's the american culture it seems to be or the world culture I know it's American because, I mean, we're steeped in it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I go back to my term, psychotic capitalism. I mean, we all have to drink, you know, sips, but we truly operate in a psychotic capitalistic society. It's never enough. It's never enough. And it's more and more and more. How can I extract more out of you without giving you what you're worth, what you need? And just the whole idea, I mean, you, you know, I mean, you know, Christine, from, a, you know, being a business owner, if you have good employees, empowered employees, ideally, your profits and your business is, a, you know, it, it should be heading in a positive direction, you know, and you got to treat people right. You got to, you got to respect Well, and them, I think you know? that they're going to, I think them. there's going to be a real awakening um, with this new group, right? And the next couple probably from now till five years from now. And it's already happening. The younger people who are coming into the workforce have a very different attitude than we do. Um, I work with yeah, some right. people who have very high positions that are like in their thirties that are making six figures that say to me, well, I'm not flying in on Sunday because I work Monday through Friday, nine to five. I'm like, you're a salaried employee. What are you talking about? They're like, oh no, right. we don't do that. And I'm like, it's such a vast difference. And it was funny because I was talking to one of my coworkers who's 30 and he goes, I think we got it right. And you guys got it wrong. <laughs> I, I think you're right because and, yeah. <laughs> pandemically, I, I think what this generation has seen, and especially my kids, um, we, they watched their parents get laid off a couple of times and there was no companies didn't care yep. you're just a number so they're watching one good thing about the internet is it's 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 a myth where these kids are becoming self-made millionaires but at least the kids are driven by the hustle even though the hustle is it's myth mythological at best but they figure that they are which we should have learned a long time ago that we're really contractors even though they're right. with the company it's very temporary. And the you first time it, your employer you says, but you're like family, you should run. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. 
Exactly. Oh, man. Well, we're going to start to All right, well, I have to down. do this because if I don't, I will be a failure as a troll. We love to troll okay. Gabe. And I didn't wear it because I wasn't going to be mean, but I just had to represent. Oh, I forgot you were a Steelers fan. Oh, that's right. Ah, ah, <laughs> ah, ah. ah. <laughs> I grew up in, oh, I grew up in Cleveland, but about it. I have three brothers <laughs> and my parents' philosophy is that I did it to piss them off. And it probably oh, is true. My older brother is still still a dog pound like seat holder. <laughs> and we still mm -hmm. harass each other like anytime they play each other. Yeah. 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 But no, it's funny because like Christine will come online like over the years when like if I'm drawing with like Tony or somebody else, Chris Buchanan about the Browns and the Steelers. But I remember one of the very first comments, she was like, yo, what, what, why are you guys so like take this to the like the nth degree? Like this is so whatever. <laughs> but it was just the way you said it. It was just so and now, funny. And now I, I jumped but, right yes. in. <laughs> yes, I love it. I love it. Well, we know we're just gonna see how the season comes. That's all. That's all. We're gonna have to see what, how the season comes. So let me ask. So as, uh, as a, our parting question, what who who would you like to see on, and what what do you think we could do to enhance Ooh, our show? Who would I like to see on? Well, I think Jimmy would be interesting. Um, he could talk about dance club. Yeah. I'm sure. He's, yeah, yeah, and also talk about being, like you know, yeah, dad right. was a famous coach. You know, like that yeah, dichotomy. I, I, right I, rem there. I remember. I remember that. Trust me. And I was like, "Wow." Yeah. His dad was the coach of. No, his the, dad was height basketball. Height basketball. And he was like, "Yeah, they named the gym like after his man, dad." Like he was a, like, "You're supposed to be a man," kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like right. coach on White Shadow, you know. Yeah. Great coach, and uh, they named yeah, the they gym named uh, it, right? at Heights after him. Yeah, um, I think so. Lara Calafatis, um, yes, Rhonda Brown, gotta have her on. Yep, yes, I gotta circle I mean, back. Rhonda, to Rhonda. you know, I've amazing artist, them and, great connection to Shaker. And the Browns. Just came back to Cleveland, was named the Cleveland Arts Czar. I mean, yeah, yeah, so I'll circle back because I reached out to her and her brothers because I would love to have them on. And you know um, who else I got? So, one more. Yeah, we got to keep on promoting. If you could get him, Michael McElroy would be a great one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. Yeah, I got to figure He's, out how to get him. Teaching at you Michigan. know this guy. Uh, he teaches at University of Michigan. He's oh, he heads up the oh, musical wow. theater department, I believe. Wow. Hey, the people out there can help us too. You know, help if you're listening. Out. Yes. Get us the hookup. Get us the hookup with that all right all right well hey uh thank you christine for coming on and thank you for uh trolling me <laughs> yeah i had you know. to get it in i've been sitting here with it i'm like oh, i love it i, pull it out? <laughs> I love it oh. and you know it's all fun that's the thing that's the beauty of it you know browns and steelers northeast ohio um all right. Well, this is another episode of Shaker Heights. Experiences may vary. We thank everybody who's tuned in live. And for those who will be watching this later, please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you look at the ticker at the bottom, we have uh, quality and what Eric is wearing. We have quality Shaker-inspired merchandise to, uh, you know, to strum that. There you go. There you go. And yeah, you know, let's tap into your nostalgia with our Shaker merch, the Shaker Garment Company, and find stores everywhere. Okay. Thank you again you guys for, having me. for coming on, no doubt. And this is already going to be on uh, YouTube because it went live to YouTube. And so it, okay. that's where it lives. Spotify it's, as well. Yeah. You don't have Spotify. To watch. Yeah.
Yeah, we're still a shop in progress. All right, for everybody, you have a good day. Rest of the day ahead on Sunday, live from the Coventry Rapid Stop in our minds. This is the Shaker Heights. Until next time. All right, Christine. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.